Good morning, church family. I hope you had a good week and were able to see God's blessings during uh, this continuing time of social distancing. I praise God for his mercies and care for my family, and I am sure that you can give thanks to God as well. I am pleased to bring you the message this morning and hope that you'll be able to spread some encouragement to your friends and family during this uh, Victoria Day long weekend. So please take some time, uh, pick up the phone, use uh, social media, use online conferencing, anything that you have available to you. Uh, take some time and to reach out and share the love that God has shown to you. So this morning uh, I've entitled the message, uh, Living in the End Times. We learned last quarter that since October 22nd, 1844, Jesus' ministry moved from the holy place to the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And this marked the beginning of the time of the end. We are now living in the last days of earth's history. And what does that mean for us as a church? How do we adapt to the changing circumstances around us and to continue the work that God has for his remnant people? But before we go any farther, let us have a word of prayer. Loving Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your mercies and your kindness, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you continue to bestow upon us. Lord, it is challenging times. These are unprecedented times, Father. Many of us have not seen this uh, at all in our lifetimes. But Lord, we give you thanks. Uh, we praise your name. We honor your name, Father. And Lord, as we come together this morning, and we open up your word, Father, and we study. I pray that you will fill each and every one of us, Father. Uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you will lead us, teach us, and guide us. Grant them wisdom and understanding, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So, when Jesus was asked by his disciples, to tell them when the end will come, he outlined some signs, some indicators or events that would point to the closeness of his coming. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn to Matthew chapter 24, and we will start reading in verse 4. Here we see Jesus is describing these signs that will precede the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 but they also parallel the time before his second coming. So let us read, starting in verse four. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Jesus outlines how tumultuous the time will be as we get closer and closer to the end of probation. We see an increase in wars and nations striving with other nations, kingdoms against kingdoms. We see famines and pestilences and earthquakes. We are living in one of those events right now. We are living amid a global pandemic, which has all of us in a state of lockdown only able to go out for the essentials of life, such as going out to the grocery store, uh, going for doctor's appointments, or uh, picking up any medication that we have. We are not free to come together in person at church and to worship and praise God. Times are changing. Times are uncertain. Look at the headlines in the news. Listen to the words of our leaders. You know, you'll often hear these common statements that these are unprecedented times, right? We've never have seen this before. We have seen this type, you know, we have not seen this type of outbreak before on a global scale. 
you know, with such rapid progression across the entire world, there is no doubt in my mind that this is a fulfillment of prophecy, that these are the signs of the times that Jesus spoke of. It is not a single event which we look to, but it's the culmination of these events that Jesus described, as well as the frequency and the intensity of these events, which show us that the end is near. How many of you have heard the phrase, we are living in the new normal? I know that I hear it a lot. Uh, I hear it at work with my company. You know, they talk about how, you know, this new normal uh, changes the way we do business now. You know, how our projects are affected and how they need to be conducted while we're practicing this social distancing. You know, I hear it, uh, this new normal, how it's going to affect the way we do business going forward, not just when the state of emergency will be lifted uh, and when our construction projects are able to resume, but how this will change the nature of our business for the long term. So these are some of the phrases that, that I hear. Also, I hear this term, the new normal at home. You know, we talk about this with our in our family, how this will affect, you know, the way we interact with people. Uh, how will schools be affected? You know, what impact will this have on how we continue to advance, you know, the ministries that God has entrusted to us, such as, you know, pathfinders and master guides? You know, how is this new normal going to affect uh, our lives going forward? How will this new normal affect our church and how we worship together and how we minister and evangelize? You know, these are some challenging questions that we have to ask ourselves as when we uh, start coming out of this. What is this new normal? But praise God, church. He is greater than any pandemic. He's greater than any war or any earthquake. Even though we are not able to meet face to face at church, uh, God's church is able to meet online and over the phone. God's church is you and me. And as long as we can pray together, sing together, talk together, and worship together, God's church will continue to function and bring honor and glory to his name. The church is not the building, which today is sitting empty. The church is God's people, the ones who believe in his name and reflect his glory to those that they meet and come in contact with. There is no problem too difficult for God to solve. There is no catastrophe too great for God to deliver us from. And there is no situation which can stop the spread of God's word. Just as in the days of the Reformation, when persecution was used to stop the spread of the gospel, God's word continued to reach souls by faithful men, women, and children. We look to the reformers, such as Huss, Calvin, and Luther. They risked everything to spread the gospel in their time. They had challenges to overcome, to remain faithful and share the truth. We have a new challenge before us where our local church must adapt and use various forms of technology to nurture our own flock and congregation and to evangelize to our communities. Our local congregation has no choice but to embrace the digital age and to use to the fullest to bring the message of salvation and of our Lord Jesus Christ to the people in our own circle of influence as well as outside of it. Now is the time to share the life-giving truth to a perishing world. Let us not be constrained by the ways and traditions of the past and give excuses why our ministries and our outreach, they're suffering and languishing and failing. Let us not stop working and spreading the good news because we are, are locked down in our own homes. God is a marvelously creative God, and he has endowed us with that same creative spirit. We must learn to adapt and use that creative spirit to advance the work of God and continue spreading the unique message of the three angels in Revelation. Perhaps 
you can start your own blog uh, and share what Jesus is doing in your life. You know, how you have gained strength from his word, uh, the peace that you experience, or perhaps uh, you can be more active on Facebook. I know that's something that I've uh, tried to do. I haven't been a big one for Facebook, but I'm trying to get into it and uh, connect with people a little bit more. Or maybe you can use uh, Instagram um, or Twitter or some of these other platforms. So look at ways to use, uh, let's say, inspiring uh, pictures or uh, videos and share Bible promises on YouTube and Pinterest. There's all kinds of uh, technology and ways out there uh, that we can look to leverage. It's just something that we have to get used to. So use your phone or send text messages to talk to people and pray with them or to share some encouraging Bible passages. Explore new ways to use websites or to use Zoom. You know, we're, that's how we're meeting this morning uh, or to enhance, to enhance the ministries that you are part of. Uh, you do not need to be the leader of a department or a ministry to think of creative ways to do outreach. So uh, let the Lord lead you uh, and share uh, what your ideas are uh, with those who are in leadership or in those departments. All of these things we can use to strengthen the church. We need to embrace these changes and new ideas to be effective in this new normal. In a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been entrusted the last warning for a perishing world. On them is shining wonderful light from the word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import to proclaim the first, second, and third angels' messages. There is no other work of so great importance. They are to allow nothing else to absorb their attention. And that was a quote taken from Testimonies for the Church, volume nine, page 19. So the message from there is, regardless of the circumstances that we find ourselves in, we have a mandate to find ways to continue the work that God has given us to do. The Lord has given each of us a special spiritual gift, or maybe more than one, to be used in his service and to prepare the world for his soon return. Take the time to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you new and creative ways to reach people. Not just during COVID-19, we need to be prepared for the future and be ready for the unpredictable events that it will bring, as Jesus outlined, you know, when he was discussing with the uh, with the disciples, right? We're going to see many different things coming uh, our way in the future. We can be the light to the world that is not uh, fearful in these uncertain and changing times. God wants us to be a comfort to the world as well as heralding the message of Revelation 14. God does not send this warning to people to make them afraid and to keep them in darkness with no hope. God allows these events to happen, to wake people out of their spiritual sleep and to draw them to himself. We can be a beacon of hope and light and encouragement, leading people to Jesus, to repentance, to salvation, and to everlasting life. We have a unique message to bring to the world. As a reminder, uh, let us turn in the Bible to Revelation chapter 14, and let's quickly review the three angels' messages. I'll begin reading from verse six. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. 
And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she has made all nations drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. The great controversy is about worship and who is deserving of our worship. As we've just read, we are to demonstrate to people what true worship looks like. We are to invite them to join us and we are also to give the warning of what will happen if they do not. God is very patient, but this current sinful world will not last forever. God is pleading with people to make their choice and to decide who they will worship and be faithful to. The world needs to choose either to worship God in purity and in truth or to worship Satan and share in his judgments and punishment for his act of rebellion. We have a work to do in these last days, a work to prepare as many souls for salvation as possible. The present duty of every true child of God is to wait patiently, to watch vigilantly, to work faithfully until the coming of the Lord, that we may be prepared for the solemn event the characteristics of, tr of the true follower of Christ, the perfect man in Christ Jesus, will be manifested in working, watching, and waiting for the Lord. He will not be wholly given up to contemplation and meditation, or be so engrossed in some busy works that he will neglect the exercise of personal piety. But in the symmetrical Christian, Personal devotion will be balanced with the earnest work, and the follower of Christ will be not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The lamps must be kept trimmed and burning, that they may send forth bright rays of light into the moral darkness of the world. Every facility must be brought into play, so that spiritual declination spiritual declension may not take place and that the note of warning may be sounded lest the day of the Lord overtake you as a thief in the night that reading was taken from the general conference bulletin October 1st 1896 we need to be faithful in these last days as we wait watch and work I invite all of you to make your choice and choose life choose Jesus. May God richly bless you and keep you this Sabbath day.